Well, and welcome to the podcast. Once again, we have esteemed friend and colleague, Gregory Manorino, who's been gracious enough to join us on this fine day, who's going to be talking about all things state of the economy, as always, where he sees us uh, headed, as well as the global financial reset and certain mechanisms thereof. Again, if you are new to the channel, please do like, subscribe, and share so that others can gain the knowledge that you have been afforded. Greg, thanks for always, as always, for being here. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it very much. Oh, it's a, it's a pleasure, believe me. Okay, so Greg, picking up where we left off last time, which was over a month ago, um, we were talking about Japan and where we might see the state of their economy. As you know, the yen crashed massively against the dollar, losing about 25% of the purchasing power against gold. This is the lowest since 1990. Um, the two questions, what do you see Japan doing next? And it was interesting to note that they just put out um, a redesigned banknote for July backed in gold. So I was wondering what your thoughts were on that. Um, I, I don't think that, unfortunately, this is how I see this continuing to play out. Uh, you know, we could we could focus on any one particular uh, nation or whatever it might be. I can't imagine that in any way, shape or form moving forward, we are going to see currency devaluation stop. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of talk about, you know, gold-backed currencies and everything else. But what people need to understand is central banks, um, I mean, none more so, I mean, seriously, than the Fed or the European Central Bank is going to be willing to surrender even the slightest amount of their of their power. And the fact that central banks' power resides in their ability to continue to issue, issue debt um, by having a commodity-backed currency, this takes away their power. So I can't imagine that happening. I realize there's, there's a lot of talk about how this may play out with regard to the BRICS nations. A lot of people are hoping that there's going to be uh, some type of a commodity-backed system. I, I think this is just a, just, it's a, a red herring. I, I don't think it's going to happen because, again, central banks' power resides in only one thing, only one and that is their ability to inflate and create de more debt out of nothing. They they have very successfully done so to the world uh, since their inception here, taking over the monetary system, uh, you know, pushing us all into this slave debt-based system. And this is how they extort control out of all of us. It's uh, you know, people are sitting back and hoping that something is going to change. And this is this is where the downfall lies. Unfortunately, people need to realize. Who really runs the show? And it is the central banks who run the economy, the financial system, the financial markets. They uh, were forced to to uh, participate in in their system, so it's designed to benefit them, not us. Henceforth, why we're seeing everything that we're seeing right now: inflation, the money velocity now picking up. At, even though the economy is cratering around the world, this is a phenomenon of uh, these extra bills that have been created out of nothing, uh, creating, uh, chasing the same amount of goods, or in this case, a lesser amount of goods. Unfortunately, it takes a long time for the uh, added uh, currency to make its way through the economy because the, of, of uh, the fact that we're going nowhere fast, in fact, contracting at our fastest pace we've ever seen. Uh, and 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 I urge people to do this. Go to the Fed's own website and look at what they've been they've done over the last six months. Just in the last six months, on average, the Fed is increasing the money supply a billion dollars a day. Meanwhile, the economy ain't picking up. The economy continues to contract. So there's you know, look. Let me just say this while we're on the topic of all of this. I believe that possibly the biggest farce that has ever been thrown upon forced upon the people of the world is how by central banks incrementally raising the federal funds rate or the overnight rate, most of you people who follow your work know what I'm talking about, we're miraculously going to see inflation disappear. This mechanism isn't even meant to work like that. How any central bank could in fact stop inflation would be how? How would they do this? By contracting the money supply, not by incrementally raising rates. You can't make this stuff up. But this is what they have sold to the people of the world. And they bought it. 
and the mainstream media keeps talking about it. And now all of a sudden we're going to get cuts here. Uh, and this is just another mechanism. I believe we're going to get cuts relatively soon uh, to allow central banks to inflate. So just going back to Japan and every other freaking nation here right now, currency devaluation is not going to stop. This has been their goal since day one here, central banks. And the the, the mechanism here is going, to, is going to punish people much worse than they are now. What's happening here? People have burned the middle class, essentially burned through whatever savings they have. We just got a very interesting piece of information yesterday that, and I love the way they word this, and you probably love it too. Consumer credit, uh, it, it's debt. Consumer debt uh, is, is, is contracting. In other words, well, not contracting. People aren't borrowing as much as they were from their credit cards before and everything else, you're taking on a bigger debt load. See, consumer credit is, is looked at as a positive thing, as you well know. If they worded this as debt, it's a play on words. People say, hold on a minute. People continue to take on more debt, more debt, more debt, more debt. They have no choice at this point because, again, inflation is taking hold. It's strangling the people to death. The economy is going down with it. This is deliberate. And it's taking the people down with it. It's, it's a terrible, terrible thing to see. But this is where we're going. Well, it's yeah, fair enough. Thank you, uh, Greg, for the, uh, as always, the detail. It's funny that you mentioned uh, the rate uh, cuts or whatnot, because I was going to ask you about that next. So you segued beautifully there. So I was looking at your data sets with the MMR report, uh, seemed to be right for a June rate uh, decrease, but the powers that be look like they're manipulating the timeline. Um, with that being said, do you still see a three rate increases for this year? And if so, when? I've, I've looked at the data. Um, in fact, I just covered this recently here. I think the chances now of a June rate cut have dropped dramatically to probably around 30%. Uh, and then they move up forward from that. They, like, uh, I don't have the data in front of me anymore, but it's somewhere like June 30%. It goes up to like 45% July, 55% August. And then another intent to September looks like an 85% where we're going to get the first cut. It could be sooner. I'm just going by what the breakdown is right now. Uh, somewhere in there, that window, uh, more than likely not, do you know? I think what's going to happen is this. Um, we already understand that this the Swiss National Bank has already instituted uh, rate cuts here. We're going to see it followed up, at least in my opinion, first by the European Central Bank. And that could come as soon as June. And um, and I would expect that the Fed is going to follow suit right after that or very soon after that. Um, and, all the, you know, it just comes down to more easy money pumped into the system, unfortunately, as a mechanism to allow them to inflate. What most people don't know is, you know, um, and I get this question all the time, even though I talk about it virtually every week, at least, is, you know, uh, how does this work? When, when a central bank cuts rates, they can't just say it. They have to get into the market and make it happen. They have to buy the debt. So this is inflationary. Again, people have been so misled and lied to. And they, they look towards, you know, the CNBCs, the Bloombergs, the Fox business for, for actionable information. They're not going to get it. They need to pay attention to shows like yours, obviously, because this is where they're going to get real information, which they can act on. See, that's what I talk about all the time. I, I'm not, my video blogs, and I'm sure you feel the same way, we're not out here to entertain anyone. We're not out here to blow sunshine up the crack of anyone either. We're out here to try to tell people, look, the situation is unfolding in this way, according to what we see or the data. Okay, now it's up to you to utilize that information in a way that will benefit you. So take action. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't understand that, how the mechanism works, why things are going the way they are, the, the deceptions and distractions getting larger and larger here. Uh, all the stuff we predicted would happen is happening. And it's just not going to stop right now. Uh, I think we're in probably the end game here. When you see consumers what do we get? We got a couple of really important pieces of information uh, out of their own mouths. The data because in, in every major city in the United States, restaurants are seeing a decrease in their patron of fast food uh, establishments. It's all junk anyway. But yes, yeah, same mm -hmm. kind of thing. People are cutting back on things like Starbucks and coffee because they can't make ends meet anymore. When you see this and now combined with consumer credit not expanding as rapidly or consumer debt. Uh, this tells us all that, you know, 
the consumer is breaking. And, and this is what they're trying to do, break the back of the consumer, bring down the economy as with it, while through the back door here, continuing to inflate. And then out of the out of the other side of their mouth, telling you, well, you know, we're trying to fight inflation and then convincing people that by raising the federal funds rate since day one, inflation was going to be temporary and transitory. Meanwhile, I mean, this, does anybody here, including you or me, do we find it at all interesting that every single projection that has made has been made by the Fed with regard to inflation has been wrong? I mean, you could throw dots at the board and be right some of the time here, okay? They've been wrong 100% of the time. So we know that this is de deliberate. They're feeding us false information, information that they know is fake, and the people are buying it. That's all I can say. Not people that follow our work. That's a fact, because we're keeping them enlightened as to what's really going on. Absolutely. And as you know, Greg, I'm sure you would agree, the more you see it, the more you see it, you realize it's a script. Everything is, they've got the cabal script all laid out. And so we're trying to help people interpolate between the lines of what's really going on, to your point. Um, you know, it's crazy. And just going back to that real quick, you watch CNBC, you watch Bloomberg, you watch Fox, Fox Business. I flip through these all day long. And they all say the same things at the same time. It's like in unison, you know, they put out the same information and they're reading it, the same wording. So, I mean, obviously it's a script because they're saying the same things. And the more they say it, I think the more apt people are to believe it. What do they, what do they say? The bigger the lie, the easier it is for people to believe. And I, I think that's true, especially for those people who are feel threatened. And this is a large population, a large uh, portion of the population that, that when they're confronted with a piece of truth, they can't handle it. They don't know what to do with themselves because the people have been so indoctrinated into the system of lies um, right from the get-go, from when they were a child into their adult life, it just, you know, pervades everything. And so when they hear the truth, they get angry. They lash out at the person trying to tell them the truth. And then they sit back sometimes, the smart ones, and they realize, hey, you know what? I, I actually understand this. And then once people get that revelation, they can't turn it off. Once they get it, and it's almost like a switch. This happened to mm -hmm. my own mother. I'm not lying. My own mother. Bang. Oh, my goodness. I finally get it. And then it, she just, you know, I was like... Now that I see it, I can't unsee it. And I hope that's what we can do here, you and me. Totally. And, and that's what I like about what we're doing here together is, is creating that synergy of truth for people. There's, there's an old expression, I'm sure you know it well, in the pantheon of lies, truth is treason. And we're seeing <laughs> that. Ain't that the truth? We're seeing it more wow. and ever. <laughs> Once again, Greg, you're tracking in my line of thinking of my questions. It's like we're, we're almost telepathic here. Because um, the next thing I was going to talk to you about, this is right up your alley as a New Yorker. Uh, there seems to be a big phenomenon growing by whereby we're seeing a lot of New Yorkers and a lot of people around the country just flat out not paying their taxes, frankly, because they can't or they just don't want to see their money going to Ukraine, which is just one big you know, money laundering operation. Uh, and then just they're not paying their debts altogether, either because of that or just because they're unable to, like you said, not being able to make ends meet. So what does this suggest to you? And, and this is kind of a softball question, but what does this suggest to you about the state of the economy and the tax system going forward? Well, look, first of all, you know, taxation is theft here on an epic scale. I think we're all well aware of that. It's an, an incredible thing if you think about it. So we have a situation here where the central banks, well, their goal collectively, and we'll, we'll focus here on the Federal Reserve, is to continue to issue more currency. Uh, and they have no choice but to do so. Again, as the currency is devalued, the Fed has to increase the money supply because now it takes more devalued dollars in this case, or it could be any central bank, to buy anything. This is what we're seeing the money supply go up here. At the same time, we're seeing money velocity kick up off. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a very frightening prospect in my view. Now, going back, look, um, with regard to taxation here, I think the whole system is, is, is obviously, and anyone who doesn't see this has got to be nuts, rigged against you. Um, and, and again, uh, having to, having no, no say so, in other words, you are forced to do this, no matter what they want to so-called spend cash on here, you know, financing wars or whatever thing else, we have no voice anymore. Um, and I don't blame anyone for not wanting to pay taxes, but they're 
going to come after you. Um, they will be unrelenting. And the fact is that this organization here is a, is a crime syndicate as well. I'm referring to the IRS. And they will take everything from you into, until you are out into the street. And, and uh, if you don't participate, you are forced. What are we free to do again? Tell me how this is the land of the free and the home of the brave. Um, really? It's, it, it's not that at all. Now, with regard to people who have debt, and unfortunately today, household debt, personal debt, consumer debt are at record highs. And even though consumer credit didn't expand as much as they expected, it's continuing to, to be a, 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 a burden on people. It's, just, it's slavery. And they want to get more people dependent on the system. It's, it's a slave system. They want more people dependent on it. Uh, and it's, it's amazing how they hang these things over people. But if people have unsecured debt, you know, the, the, the big secret is, uh, and people are not supposed to know that you are if, if you read the fine print of these things, and you're not allowed to know this, people are allowed to renegotiate that debt. And people, if it's unsecured, not against a house or a car or something like that. You can renegotiate that debt down to pennies on the dollar. Uh, I have a free brief uh, uh, that I put out years ago where I walk people how to do this step by step. I walk you through how to do it. It's a uh, it's, it's very... Uh, in, I, I can't even say the word. When people can do these things and free themselves from this kind of a servitude, it is it's a freeing, literally, uh, 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 thing to 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 do. Mm -hmm. So you know they they want to create slaves to the system, and you must pay your taxes. And you we're gonna buy bombs and send them to Ukraine and everywhere else we want to do. It doesn't matter what you want. It's what we want. You know, that's how you know the system is, you know, it, it's not what people think it is. And uh, unfortunately, it's an illusion. The whole thing is an illusion here. The illusion of the markets is another big one here. You know, maintaining the uh, the, the, the high val price value. The, this, this stock markets have no no value anymore. It's all about uh, the promises of easy money here. I mean, uh, what where, where should the Dow Jones industrial average actually be? Not even a quarter of where we are today. Not even close. Maybe Dow six thousand would be normal. Or an actual, you know, what it's worth here. What are we at today? Thirty seven thousand and change. It's unbelievable. The the overvaluing of the market here uh, at this point, and you know, and it's going to get even worse as the currency devaluation continues, um, as more debt is pulled into the system here. Anyway, that's my take on this whole thing, pretty much. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. The word that came to mind, Greg, as you were sharing about how to your your tools and, and tips of how to get out of the system or get around it was emancipation, you know, freeing yourself. Yeah. And, and yeah, emancipation. Really it's a great word. You know, sometimes my brain gets a little, but it is true. It's a, it's, it's a <laughs> freeing thing. You know, yeah. people, most people have, have debt, credit card debt, uh, where mm -hmm. they're charging uh, some credit cards are charging 32%. 32% annual APR. I mean, that's this is predatory. I mean, and mm -hmm. you know, that's another thing. If if people are paying exorbitant you know, rates on their credit cards, people don't know that they can actually call and ask for a lower rate. And generally, they're going to get it. Sometimes you're mm -hmm. not. But if you look at you know your statement, people don't even look at them. People just pay the bill, they pay the bill. They're hoping you don't look at it. And some people, these, these rates are adjustable in most cases here. So you're paying 28%, 30%, whatever it might be. You could call and say, hey, listen, uh, I'm paying 32% here. I, uh, is Can I get a lower rate? A lot of times they'll give you a lower rate for a certain amount of time, which will give people a head, uh, a head start on trying to pay that stuff off. You know, it's not this, if you pay the minimum or even double, even triple the minimum of what you owe, you're never going to get out of debt. It's it's a predatory system. It's designed that way, but you can fix it. Go go check out my stuff, how to get yourself out of, out of debt uh, for pennies on the dollar. Just Google it. It's pretty much everywhere. Cool. I will. Appreciate that. Great segue to another question. Um, you're seeing macroeconomists and contrarians, which we are, uh, now setting up a target of 7,000 for the S&P. Do you think the stock market will uh, ever reach this uh, lofty amount? <laughs> Nothing would surprise me, man. They're going to inflate everything. I mean, uh, you know, look, in in terms of paper wealth, what pe look, the illusion is, okay, let's boost up the stock market by devaluing the currency, by keeping rates suppressed. But people don't understand the mechanism here. When rates are suppressed and bond yields are dropping, it opens up a doorway for cash to make its way into risk assets or the stock market. It inflates a bubble. It's designed to do so. The Federal Reserve is a serial bubble, blah, blah, blah. 
bubble blower. <laughs> they inflate these bubbles, they deflate these bubbles, they inflate them, and more cash is made on the downside faster than when the market goes up. You know, it's an escalator up and like, you know, of falling off of a cliff on the way down. Everyone's running to the door at the same time. People will take anything they, for their asset that they can get. Uh, it's a terrible situation uh, in a real crash. But I wouldn't be surprised to see how this this plays out here. I am convinced. I am pretty much convinced that until the presidential selection, we are going to see the stock market move higher, especially if we get rate cuts sooner than later here. Market's going to go higher. Currency devaluation again takes more devalued dollars to buy anything, even shares of stock. Interest rate suppression, uh, rate suppression opening that door for cash to make its way into this. It can go, it can go any, it can double. I mean, triple. Who knows? But but again, this is paper wealth. It's not real. It's not real. When people look at the value of their home, oh, my home went up 10 grand last month or went up 40,000 in the last year. They're loving it. They're loving it. I'm paper rich. On paper, I'm a millionaire. I'm a multi-millionaire. But then all of a sudden, when it goes away, because and it will this is whole thing is obviously going to get very 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 real at one point risk on is going to turn risk off cash is going to bleed out of the debt market bleed out of the stock market and make its way into commodities and i think also into cryptos into collectible things all work musical instruments it cash just just looks for places to go it doesn't fly away to money heaven so that's how this is going to play out. They can come up whatever number they want, every any projection that they want. Generally, when you hear things like that, usually it means we're at the top. Um, I mean, you can look back on every market crash that we've ever had. If you look back at the dot com, if you look back at 08, right before, if you look at the crash of 29, okay, going back, if every one of these kinds of crashes, you always hear these big projections about where the market's going to go. Sure. No, nothing would surprise me. But when you hear that kind of talk, that means more than likely we're near a top. And I say this too. I want people to start to pay attention to not where we are now. Animals and little children live in the moment, okay? We as adults need to think a little further down the line here. This is why we're betting against the debt, becoming our own central bank, meaning holding hard assets. My favorites on the planet right here, my favorite of all time, silver, you know that. Yeah. Okay, betting against it, realizing that this thing is going to get very real. At one, and it's not by accident. This is be, We're be deliberately being driven in this way. They want to bring the current system down to its knees and bring us down to our knees with it. So we beg for a new system. So- Looking down the line here, I think moving into 2025 after the presidential selection, things can change. And I, and I look at all the data all the time, and I think about it all the time. To me, we'll see where this goes, but it looks like everything is lining up perfectly to set up for a, after the selection into 2025. Things can get very, very bad, very, very fast. Um, so we need to we need to look, keep our eyes on that. Indeed. You know, it's funny you mentioned, uh, and I agree, obviously, as fellow musicians, uh, you know, rare arts and collectibles, music equipment, you know, that's vintage and things like that. Did you see uh, in New York, uh, the Queens-based company, Sam Ash, is going to be closing all of their stores as July. That was so sad. It is so sad. Sam Ash. Oh, man, I remember used to going down 48th Street when I was a kid, when I was learning how to play. I was maybe 13 years old, taking a bus from Brooklyn down going down 48th Street with my, my yeah. buddy Mitch. And uh, we would, that's how I learned how to play, um, was from musicians, you know, going down there. My parents couldn't afford to send me for lessons or anything like that. So I had to learn by having people teach me. So I would go down to the music stores like Sam Ash and watch the musicians. You know, everyone's testing out their guitars. And if I heard something I found interesting, I'd say, hey, would you mind showing me how you, how you played that? And that's how I learned. And, you know, you don't have to pay for lessons or anything like that. You can learn on your own through books. And I, that's another way. I, you know, I bought guitar chord books and all that stuff like that. But, you know, I just kind of was, I don't even want to say self-taught because other people taught me by me going to places like Sam Ash, unfortunately. Look, businesses are shuttering, unfortunately. Uh, we're seeing, you know, closures. I, there are places, when I was in Las Vegas, just as an example, because I was in there a lot longer than I've been here in Florida right now. We were watching, looking at it in ghost malls ghost malls everywhere i went out to dinner what day was that on a saturday um a nice restaurant out here on the water it was dead dead i'm looking around going where are the people mm -hmm. where is everyone mm -hmm. and uh it was kind of a frightening prospect because the, the, you know look people are going to lose their jobs these businesses are going to close here and that's what's designed to do the fed here and this is you know 
all these central banks, they are closing down the economy. Meanwhile, they're inflating at the same time, and they're telling people how great everything is. We got a bit of truth yesterday from Fed uh, Harker, 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 whatever his freaking name is. Oh, the economy looks like it's going to be slowing more so. So we're being told it's doing great, but he's saying it's slowing and it's going to slow more so from now. Of course it is. I mean, you know, we got nowhere to go here, but but worse. And this is deliberate as well. Anyway, uh, I, I think that people that follow our work get it here. I just hope they're not just sitting back here and doing nothing, that they're taking action. Yeah, I mean, I think, like you said, the, the main headlines are taking your own act, taking action and becoming your own central bank. Right and thinking critically, these things have to intertwine together. To your point, uh, speaking of metals, Greg, it's some interesting stuff that came up. Uh, <clears throat> sure, no, no surprise to you. Uh, they're estimating that copper will be in the not too distant future ten thousand dollars a ton. So, with that in mind, I want to ask you: Is will ninety five percent of copper, meaning pre nineteen eighty two pennies, be worth anything after the debt collapse? And if so, is it worth it to stack these pennies? Because it seems like real copper pennies could be a viable denomination rather than just junk silver. But I've never really heard anybody talk about it. It seems like perhaps a mercury dime could be worth more than certain items that you might want to barter with in a collapse. So I was just wondering your thoughts on that. There's some copper for you. There I you own go. copper. There I think go. I love commodities. Everyone knows that. I've been telling people, in fact, just this morning, I, I, in my video from the earlier today, you know, I do two a day, I told people that they need to increase their exposure to commodities here. Goldman Sachs should just increase their price target on copper this year, 12,000 uh, per ton at the end of the year. Uh, and again, it's a commodity, uh, absolutely. Commodities, people need to start, in, whatever you have, in my opinion, people need to start adding to their, their hoard of this stuff. Um, physical stuff is my favorite, but some people don't want to do that. There are many ways you can gain exposure to commodities. I think people, like, for example, buy an, an ETF or an exchange traded fund, uh, in my free newsletter, I put out at least five, maybe even six newsletters uh, where I speak about uh, several exchange traded funds where people who want to get involved that way uh, with commodity exposure. I think people should have exposure to a wide variety, a broad basket of, of commodities. If you're, going, if you're looking into an exchange traded fund, you can, there are targeted ones, obviously, but I would be looking at a, a, a broad basket of, of uh, commodities here to gain exposure. You know, even just if, you know, a, a small position, most people, they don't want it. People follow my work, they want to hold it in their hands like this. Mm -hmm. But there are some people that, the reason why I even put out those newsletters is because people were asking me about it. Hey, Greg, you know what? I have, I have a lot of gold physical. I have a lot of silver, platinum, palladium. I have a lot of copper. I have a lot of it. I'm looking for another way to gain exposure. So that's what prompted me to put out in my newsletter these, uh, and it's free to everyone. So I just, I hope people take advantage of that and they can just look through my publications there and they'll find the list. Uh, like I said, there's at least five, maybe even six lists of exchange traded funds that people who want that kind of exposure right now, the way it looks to me. Okay. Um, we're going to see, um, if we, as soon as we start to get cuts, the market will probably start to rise even more faster. That means that that doesn't mean that it, it's it's gaining any value. In fact, that was, I would say the stock market would be more in, in real terms is less valuable because it's going to take more, you know, weaker dollars to buy this stuff. And it, it, there's no connection at all to reality. But get on the long side of the market. You know, I'm still long. I am long this market. I've been long this market for years and years and years and years and years. The market's been very good to me. And the people that follow my work, I tell the people exactly what I'm doing, what I'm holding, or what I'm doing. I think that's the right spot to be in right now, especially realizing, you know, not just that one thing. People need to be diversified. You know, I own, I own a lot, lot, lot of assets here. Uh, silver, huge amount. Gold, a lot of that. Platinum, palladium as well. I have exposure to a broad basket of commodities as, as, as well. I own cryptocurrencies. I heard something strange in the background. Don't know what that was. Anyway, <laughs> stuff the <laughs> They're at my door. And I'm going to watch it too. Um, but I look at risk. And risk can tell us a lot as to if we want to be in this market or not. The MMRI, the Manorino Market Risk Indicator, free to everybody, has dropped from an extreme risk zone, red, into an amber zone. That's because someone out here is buying a lot of debt. I wonder who's buying all that debt, okay? That's keeping rates suppressed. That mechanism lessens risk in the market. And uh, I, I believe that's unfortunately going to play out to be to a much greater degree moving forward. 
Um, can you give me one second here? Sure. I'll be, I'll be right back. No problem. Okay, great. Sorry. So thanks for the summation on that, Greg, as always, much appreciated. So again, we're tracking in the same place. I was My next question was going to be about speaking of debt. Obviously, we've been talking about the massive debt load. One of the beauties of this channel and our community, as you rightly said, is I have the opportunity to bend the ear of a lot of different uh, subject matter experts like yourself who have a wide breadth and depth of knowledge. Another person like this was, as you know, Bill Holter. And his belief is that uh, the debt is untenable and that, you know, as you know, the, the fake news always tells us nothing. And they're telling us, <laughs> yes. <laughs> telling us that, uh, uh, you know, the debt is somewhere around 35 trillion and that we're printing a trillion every 90 to 100 days, which we, you know, we could talk about the absurdity of that for days. But uh, Bill Holter believes that the real debt is somewhere between 250 and 300 trillion if you estimated gold and silver to be unsuppressed to pay off the debt. My point being is that, and I'm sure you agree, the debt's untenable. So he feels that we're going to just default, and clearly the CBDC is a trap that no one should take, and everybody in our community knows that. Do you agree that they're just going to wholly default on the debt? We're already in technical default. If we didn't have, if the Fed wasn't able to print all this cash out of nothing, we'd, be, we'd already be in default right now. And the, and the effect of this is mass, mass. And I mean mass currency devaluation. Mm -hmm. So, we're, of course, I mean, that's a, the eventual... Bill is very on target with this. Okay. Eventually, we are going to have, I mean, this is what this comes down to. This hyper bubble in the global debt market is, to me, the greatest threat to human life on the planet. Once we get it, the debt market is going to implode. It's a hyper bubble. If we know one thing about bubbles, it's one thing is that they eventually all burst. There's been nothing like this in the history of the world. Now, this bubble in global debt is being hyperinflated by design. Again, to bring the system down, they need an outcry. They, the central banks who run the show they, collectively here, they need a public outcry on a mass global scale. Help us, please. Because what eventually is going to happen here, we're going to end up, you see, it, it doesn't, if people really understood what happened during the last meltdown, 2008, it really wasn't about the stock market crashing. It was about the credit markets. The credit markets were locking up. What did they do? Mass capital injections into the system to free up the credit markets. If they did not do that, all transactions would have stopped. You would swipe your ATM card, don't work. Credit cards don't work. No transactions done. You can't get food, nothing. It just ends. If they didn't free up the credit markets, that's what would have happened. The same thing is going to happen now, and they can't stop it, nor do they want to. They want to allow the system to implode so they can offer, again, bring the system completely down and start over again with a new system, one of maximum control. So absolutely. First of all, if you look at, when they tell you what the debt is, they're looking at debt at face value. If you you have to you have to look at this and say, okay, that's this face value. If you look at the, the associated derivatives, there are layers of these. We're probably in the quadrillions of debt, way, way more than Bill's probably predicting here. I think the debt is over in the quadrillions here, and it's never meant to pay, be paid back. It's meant to expand. It can't ever be paid back. That's the nature of the system. It demands more debt be pulled into it every minute of every day. It's unrelenting, and the currency loses value as well, and we all lose, and they know that. So, and they need, what they want to do here is extort as much control out of us as they possibly can get. Henceforth, why? They, they're destroying the system step by step, treating us like the boiling frogs here, and then eventually the implosion of the system, and then they're going to offer us a solution. Their solution, more control, completely digital. And again, I think part of this here, and this is, this is where it gets even more scary, I guess is maybe the word. I believe that we're going to see, and I've been telling people for this for years, a vast reduction in the global population. They are going to force upon us a resource problem on a grand scale, on a biblical level. This is what I've said before. Uh, and that is that resource scarcity is going to cause people to war against each other in the streets of wherever they live in the world. This is what they want to do. It's about control. And to have control, they will reduce the population. They don't care who they have to kill. The few people, the handful, and it really comes down to a handful of people on this who control the world. Um, they That's all they want there. They want more control, and they're going to extort it out of all of us, just like they're doing now, slowly and methodically until it hits us like a tidal wave. And that's where it's going. 
Which is yet another reason, Greg, why part of being your own central bank, as you know, encompasses buying land and uh, water sources and things like that to counteract that. But yeah, yeah, as long as we stay proactive to your point and see the road ahead, then we can we can hedge against that. Um, okay, so then another question would be, is, is this actually a good point right up your wheelhouse with the 10-year treasury yield? Uh, it, it was right on the cusp, I think about a week or two ago of defaulting and the ECB came in and quote, saved it. Um, at what point do you think they won't be able to save it? And what is that marker that you see, whether it's MMRI or just your own analysis where it's going to be untenable? Well, I mean, the situation is already untenable. So in order to bring the bond yields down, someone has to get in there and buy the debt. Someone has to buy the debt. And when they mm -hmm. buy the debt, yields come down. At one point, they're not going to do, by their own hand. They're going to allow the system to implode, spiking in yields across the board. And I mean, we're talking about 20, 30, 40 basis point jumps in a day, so followed by another 30, 40, 50 in a day. And everyone's going to run to the door at the same time as they always do to try to get out. Uh, and then what, what happens at that point? Pressure on the stock market. Stocks sell off. Cash moves. It's a very simple. Cash moves through the markets in relatively predictable patterns. If we can stay ahead of that, well, then I think we're going to be okay, at least from a financial standpoint. They're going back to what we were saying before here. I, I urge everyone here, every Friday, every single Friday, my, my post-market video, I leave people off with three things. Love each other, care about each other, and be charitable. We got to come together. Mm -hmm. This is the only way we can win. And mm -hmm. we're going to need, in a worst case scenario, and this clearly looks like it's moving towards that. We're going to need each other. Not We're not going to need to kill each other. People are arguing those. Oh, my favorite metal is lead. You're going to murder everyone? Or would you rather bond together with people who have a like mind, who can maybe get through what's coming here? Yeah, people right. are going to murder each other. And that's what they want. Part of the population reduction system that they already have in place here. Um, anyway, that that's how I look at this whole thing. And Eventually, again, we are already in a technical default with regard to the debt. With regard to the 10-year yield of the bond market itself, the Fed's buying all the debt. They want to be, you have to understand central banking at its core. When central banks started, when the Fed started, they had but one goal. Their one goal is to one day become the lenders and buyers of last resort to own it all. By doing so, they realized this would be a slow, methodical pro pro uh, progress process and they could get people in it without them even knowing what's going on. And that's exactly what we have now. They have become the government. They have become the one world government that we've been warned about. And they call the shots. We are forced to live in their debt-based system, transacting their currency. People, it's, it's astonishing. People don't even understand that when they go to work every day, they work for the privilege to borrow those dollars from the Federal Reserve in this case. We don't own the currency. It's a Federal Reserve note. We owe the cash that we borrow from the Fed back to the Fed, and they create interest out of nothing. Imagine that kind of a scenario. It's not science fiction. That's what we have here. And it's only going to manifest itself in a, in a much worse way moving forward. And they're doing this is deliberate. Again, there's no one here that's going to fix this. There's no one here that's going to save this. The system is being brought down deliberately to its knees. And it's no secret why we're seeing war expand here. War expanding at the same time the Fed is tapering down its repo program. You know what I'm talking about here. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> really, is that a coincidence? How about, I don't believe in that. I don't believe that this is a coincidence that we are going to see war expand much more too as well. Of course not. It's all, again, a script, you know? And <laughs> talking about repos, just ask the uh, the auto dealerships in the car industries who are hemorrhaging right now how bad this situation is. <laughs> um, so another couple more questions. I know you're a busy man, Greg. Uh, some experts like Colonel Douglas McGregor believe that half the Taiwanese population actually want to be reunited with China and will eventually happen without a fight. What are your thoughts and what are the implications if Taiwan reunites or is taken over by China? I think the chances of that happening are greater and greater every day. I think eventually it's going to happen. I really do. I think it's almost inevitable that's going to happen. It's just a matter of when and how. And I think they're going to, it'll be a time of, of their choosing. They're waiting. See, right now, when, when I, I think right now China looks at the United States as, a, as an enemy. Um, I think the I think China would love to have the world reserve currency. Um, I, in fact, this is why they align themselves with the with the the BRICS nations over there. Obviously, right. Mm -hmm. So um, we uh, we're, we're going to see. Um, look, it's just so easy to understand how this is going to go, where it's going to eventually go. But 
you give your enemy when you when you are looking at someone as your enemy here you give them just enough rope to hang themselves and and that's what they're doing here the united states we're bankrupt we're, we're we are so far beyond bankrupt mm. it's not funny and, and and i'm not saying that china is in any better of a situation their situation is just as dire but the people the, the people of china have a different mentality than the people here in the united states here people are soft let's be honest they're soft they want to be taken care of from cradle to grave uh, you know, people don't know what bathrooms to use anymore. This is the reality of the situation. Uh, they don't, you know, it's crazy, but that's yeah. what, so they're just waiting. And I think this whole thing is unfortunately going to unfold, as we said earlier, in a, in a worst case scenario moving forward. So we just people, just be ready for anything. Just think of how things can unfold in a worst case and then prepare for it that way. Because if it doesn't happen, you're going to be pretty well off, aren't you? But if it does, at least you're ready for it. And um, going back to what we were saying earlier, take action. The financial system is is coming apart. The the economy is coming apart, um, and everything is again leading to a climax. And this climax here is where we are all going to need each other, not mm -hmm. kill each other. Absolutely, have a plan and a plan to act, and that's what you and I and many others are implementing people to do. Um, and also, I would say, just to add to the cache of what you were saying, Greg, for the last question, I think here our mentality in the U.S. is uh, instant gratification. We've been very much to believe Absolutely. that. Absolutely. That's what people want. Yeah. They don't, they're not, that's what I'm talking about people living in the moment. They want it mm -hmm. now. They don't want, this is why people, you know, instead of saying, you know what, if I save my money for six months, I can buy that thing I want. But no, I want it now. So I'm going to borrow the cash, put myself into more debt. Uh, become more of a slave to the system, but at least I'm going to have that thing I wanted. That's what they're doing. That's what this whole thing is designed to do. People need to step back for a moment and think about how everything they do or do not do is going to affect their life or their lifestyle. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. most people are looking for what they perceive as an easy way out. And all they're doing is making it worse for themselves. Right. Yeah. They're, it's, they're doing like our government's doing is just, or quote government, like you said, no more federal and federal express. They're just, they're just adding to the bubble that's going to eventually implode. Uh, and then, you know, the Asian culture, particularly the Chinese tend to have more of a long range. They're patient. They have a long range, broader focus. And that's one mm -hmm. area I think that we could adopt from them for ourselves. And I think that's what we're doing. I wish, man, it ain't going to happen. It's the mentality that they've forced upon the people here in this nation. You know what I mean? They, it, it's, it's a wanting mentality. And it's, it's mm -hmm. not patient at all. They want that fix. They want it now. Uh, and and yeah. that's it. And unfortunately, that's most, 95% of the people probably live like that. It's a terrible thing. Say closer to 99%, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, but the 1%, yeah probably 99, but I didn't want to say that. <laughs> I know, I know. You're being you're being generous. But the 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 one to five percent that follow channels like ours are not in that mentality or are turning, and hopefully they're helping other people, like you said, you know, like you said with your mom, gender that turnaround of thought, you know, and, and getting prepared and being proactive. Um, so last question, I think is a good place to end today. Uh, as you know, BRICS uh, conducted a $260 billion trade without the dollar and cross-border payments, as Bill Holter says, something real for something real. Um, China just uh, paid off nearly $68 billion in interest uh, loans for Zimbabwe to get them into the BRICS and obviously get at their gold, because as you know, Zimbabwe quietly has one of the largest gold reserves in the world that no one's talking about. Oops, did we say the quiet part out loud there? <laughs> Wouldn't that suggest, um, we, I understand you said a currency devaluation and and I think you're referring mostly to the dollar, if I'm not mistaken. But with the BRICS and just with you know countries de-dollarizing and powering up in their own assets because the bond yield is such crap, wouldn't it suggest that there is going to be a currency reset away from the dollar? And if so, what countries are you looking at specifically? Absolutely. I mean, this is no secret. I mean, country, look, who... <laughs> we, the United States, because and people don't understand this, because of... The fact that, at least for now, we have the world's reserve. We mm -hmm. get to export our inflation. I've been telling people for the longest time, the two, the number one and two, and I don't know what order you want to put these in, uh, export products of the United States are one propaganda, probably one propaganda, and two inflation. I don't know which, it could be one inflation and two propaganda. But anyway, so the world is sick of it. 
The world has frankly had enough of this. And people would say, well, it's because of the mismanagement of from the Federal Reserve. This isn't mismanagement. This is deliberate. They are deliberately doing this because a new system is coming. Uh, period. The end. You know, that we've seen throughout it, here, the United States dollar was not always the world reserve. People think that it was. It wasn't. This this system is going to change again. And the thing here that I think people need to understand is the Federal Reserve will not give up their stranglehold on the world reserve currency, no matter what new form it comes out in, okay, without millions of people dying. They will kill whoever they have to do it. We're going to see war, the expansion of war, the propagation of war, and everything as you can imagine here uh, be instituted so the Fed can keep their stranglehold on the world reserve. That's how I see it playing out. Okay, fair enough. Well, thanks for always being, uh, you know, honest and direct and uh, being at the same time granular with details. Um, as always, where can people find your work, right? Oh, just find me anywhere. Traderschoice.net, my website, YouTube. I, I just Google me. I'm easy to find. <laughs> Okay. And just so you know, in my community, we did put out uh, prayers for your sister, and uh, we are uh, believing oh, thank that you. she's going to healing. Oh, you're welcome, brother. We look forward to having you again, as always, very soon. And thanks for your time, and we'll see you shortly. You're awesome, bro. Take care. Bye-bye.